The Almoravid Caliphate was an Islamic Berber empire in the western Maghreb that lasted from 1070 to 1147 CE, with their capital at Marrakesh. They united Islamic, Western, and West African worlds, and were the most powerful military force in the western Mediterranean. Their rule changed the region, Islam, and the entire world, even long after they were gone. The origins of the Almoravids start with the nomadic Berber tribes of the western Maghreb region, a confederation of tribes called the Sanhaja, the two main tribes being the Gudala and Lamtuma tribes. After returning from Hajj, Abd Allah ibn Yasin led a movement along with Yahya bin Ibrahim to spread their reform Islamic ideology to the Sanhaja tribes. Their ideology was radically egalitarian, and you would be punished just as harshly if you didn't show up to prayer as if you would have committed murder or adultery. In 1055, the Gudala and Lamtuma tribes were united under Yahya bin Umar, and the important Trans-Saharan trade cities of Sijil Masa and Tehert were seized shortly after. To understand how the Almoravids came to regional dominance, we first need to look at the geopolitical situation of the Western Maghreb before they came to power. The two dominant powers were the Umayyad Caliphate of Cordoba in Nigeria and the Fatimid Caliphate in Afriqiya. They were rivals who fought for control in the Western Maghreb region. However, the Fatimids moved their capital to al qahiyara in Egypt in 979, shifting their control away from the Western Maghreb. And 50 years later, the Caliphate of Cordoba collapsed, creating a power vacuum was later exploited by the Almoravids. In 1071, Abu Bakr bin Umar founded Marrakesh, which serves as a transition point when the Almoravids transformed from a religious movement into a polity. The same year, Abu Bakr went south to quell a rebellion in the Sahara. He left his cousin, Yusuf bin Tashfin, in charge to rule while he was gone. Two years later, Abu Bakr bin Umar returned, but Yusuf bin Tashfin refused to give up power and deposed Abu Bakr, becoming the sole ruler of the Almoravid Emirate. In the later years, Yusuf bin Tashfin expanded north into the Maghrib, capturing the city of Fez. Before Yusuf bin Tashfin, leadership in the Islamic world looked something like this. It was a system where the emir, or ruler of the polity, would control political and administrative affairs, while the imam would control religious affairs and provide legitimacy for the emir, both of whom were subservient to the caliph. With a substantial power base, Yusuf bin Tashfin got approval from the caliph to change his title to Amir al-Muslimun, or commander of the Muslims, gaining both the powers of the emir and the imam, changing the structure of power across the Islamic world for rulers to follow him. To the south of the Almoravids lie the magnificent Ghana Empire, also known as Wagadu. Ghana was a pagan nation and the main trader in the Trans-Sahara trade. There are not that many sources from this time period, but the Ghanaians seem to have converted to Islam in the late 11th century. There are a few theories of why this may have happened, including an Almoravid conquest of the empire. The Sahanja originated south of the Sahara, and they would have shared a border with the Ghana Empire, making a conquest quite likely. Another theory is that the Ghana Empire, overshadowed by the Almoravids, converted to Islam for cooperation in the lucrative Trans-Saharan trade. Afterwards, the empire began to decline, giving rise to the Mali Empire. To the north, the Reconquista was in full swing. The north of the peninsula was in control of the Christian king, Alfonso VI of León and Castile, who had recently captured the city of Toledo. Al-Andalus was fragmented into small taifas that were constantly at war. It seemed like the end was near, but in 1086, Yusuf bin Tashfin arrived in Iberia with 12,000 men. He, along with the help of some of the taifas, met Alfonso's forces at the Battle of Sagrajas, and the Christians were defeated. Tashfin then marched on Toledo and besieged it, but then tensions between the taifas called Tashfin to return to the Almoravid capital at Marrakesh. When he arrived again a few years later, he invaded the Taifas, and the Almoravid invasion of Iberia began. Ten years later, Al-Andalus was under Almoravid control. Jews living in Al-Andalus were suppressed, which brought an end to the Jewish Golden Age there. In 1106, Yusuf bin Tashfin died, and his son, Ali bin Yusuf, came to power. Ali bin Yusuf was born during the peak of the Almoravids, and was accustomed to city life, and not the battle-hardened tough life in the Sahara that characterized his predecessors. He tried to expand war into Iberia, but his armies could not cross the Pyrenees. And despite being great in battle, Almoravid forces struggled up to the cities. This was the beginning of the end for the Almoravids, and they began to decline. 
After losing the Battle of Onrique in 1139, the Christian Kingdom of Lisbon was established, creating the beginning of Portugal. Rebellion sparked up across the empire, a notable one being the Cordoba Rebellion. These rebellions were put down, but their demise would come from another enemy, longtime rivals of not just the Almoravids, but also the Sahanja Confederation, the Almohads. The Almohads were a Berber tribe from the Atlas Mountains and long opposed Almoravid rule. They revolted in a time of political instability. Led by the fundamentalist religious scholar Muhammad bin Tumar, the Almohad movement was a radicalized version of Islam, similar to Wahhabism. The Almohads took control of Marrakesh in 1147 and deposed the Almoravids from power. Well, the Almoravids still controlled the Balearic Islands in the form of the Taifa of Majorca, but that was pretty insignificant. Anyway, the Almohads adopted many of the institutions and customs found and used by the Almoravids, such as the leader having both the power to the Emir and the Imam. The Almohad Caliphate lasted until 1269. Even though the Almoravid Caliphate collapsed, their impact on world history lasted far beyond their time. They inspired Berber rule in the Western Maghreb, which lasted for centuries. But that also created tensions between Berbers and Arabs, which were exploited by the French when they invaded Morocco in the 19th century. The Al Almoravids had immense influence in the trans saharan trade, and whether they invaded Ghana or not, they played a key role in the Islamization of West Africa and giving rise to the Mali Empire. The effects of this are still seen today in West African nations such as Nigeria, where there is a large Muslim population and armed insurgents groups such as the Boko Haram are fighting for control. The Almoravid invasion of Iberia halted the Reconquista for another 400 years until the fall of Granada in 1492. Portugal was established in part of the decline of the Almoravids, otherwise it would have been part of Castilla Leon, or what is now Spain. If Portugal had never been established, there would have been less of the competition incentive for colonization, making a profound impact on world history. The Almoravid influence in the Western Maghreb shifted the center of power of the Islamic world, bringing more attention to the region, making cities like Marrakesh, Fez, and Tangier centers of trade and commerce, being home to people such as Ibn Battuta, who traveled all across the Old World in the 14th century. The Almoravid system of giving religious power to the ruler was adopted by many other Islamic nations to follow it, such as the Ottoman Empire, where the Sultan had religious authority. From a small desert religious movement to a vast and dominant empire, and everything in between, from the foundations of Marrakesh to the rise of Yusuf bin Kashfin, from Al Andalus to West Africa, and all of their accomplishments and legacies, the Almoravids have truly left their mark on.